Welcome to Big Pool Discipleship 101, The Bible in a Year. Week 18, 1 Chronicles 1 through 17, From Adam to the Davidic Covenant. Like the Gospels, Chronicles is another witness. Samuel and Kings were in the Jewish prophetic books with a prophetic view of history, telling all the bad things that the kings did. Chronicles is the last book of the Jewish Bible and not a prophetic book, but a priestly book with a worship history, including the Ark and the Temple. It's also a positive book telling all the good things that the kings in the line of David did. Chronicles emphasizes good kings like David, Josiah, and Hezekiah, and prepares for Christ. In 1 Chronicles 1, the best life on earth is painful and transient. Jacob, defrauding Esau, created a legacy of hate. Ought we leave a good spiritual legacy? Let's look at the sons of Shem. Elam was in southern Iran. Asher built Nineveh and called his subjects Assyrians. Arphaxad may have founded Ur of the Chaldees. Lud possibly possessed the mountains of Asher. Aram gave his name to the Arameans. Let's look at Ham's children. Cush is associated with Ethiopia. Mizraim is Egypt. Phut was in Libya. And Canaan, most of Palestine. Let's look at the sons of Japheth. Gomer is variously identified with Galatia and Cappadocia. Magog is associated variously with Scythia, the Magyars of Hungary, and Mongolia. Tiras is associated variously with the Thracians, Troy, and Thor. Javan is associated with Ionia, Greece, and Spain. Meshech and his wife Kva may have founded Moscow, Moskva. Tubal may have been an ancestor of Caucasians who later migrated to Spain, Italy, and Basque country. Madai may have given his name to the Medes. In 1 Chronicles 2, can you name the twelve sons of Israel? Who was the one daughter of Jacob? What happened to Dinah? In 1 Chronicles 3, how do the reigns of David and Solomon fit into Israel's worship of God? Which king was taken prisoner by the Babylonians? In 1 Chronicles 4, what can we learn from the prayer of Jabez? In 1 Chronicles 5, why did Reuben lose the oldest son's inheritance? How were the tribes of Judah and Joseph different? How do circumstances, God's will, and character determine success or failure? In 1 Chronicles 6, is there a sermon in a long list of names? Why do the names of Moses and Samuel stand out? How important is worship music to God? In 1 Chronicles 7, what do we learn about the value of a human life? In 1 Chronicles 8, what do we learn about the effectiveness of violence as a foundation for peace? In 1 Chronicles 9, how does exile picture separation from God and hell? Since their return from exile, the Jews have never again engaged in idolatry. In 1 Chronicles 10, how can one man's sin affect many innocent people? In 1 Chronicles 11, can people elect a right leader? How important is it for a national leader to covenant with God and appoint proven leaders? In 1 Chronicles 12, do times of adversity prove who our real friends are? Are we as devoted soldiers of the cross as these men were to David? In 1 Chronicles 13, in a religious revival, how important are seemingly insignificant worship details to God? In 1 Chronicles 14, what does this tell us about our enemies? How should we pray? In 1 Chronicles 15, how important are articles used in worship? How did this teach us about reverence and taking time for proper preparation of the things of God? In 1 Chronicles 16, we have the first four strophes of Psalm 105. Should public worship include thanksgiving and praise and be led by appointed ministers? Should all participate? In 1 Chronicles 17, what was the Davidic covenant? What does it portray for all others who love God? Well, that's it for this time. Until next time, God bless you.